Welcome to another video from Learn Electrics. Just a short one this time about dimmer switches. We've had many questions about dimmer switches and asking how they work. In this video, we'll start by looking at the more common type of dimmer switch that is used with the standard domestic filament lamps. The type of dimmer switch shown in this video will be the type that is normally suitable for halogen and incandescent lamps with a load of between 40 watts and 250 watts. Dimmable LEDs will require a different type of controller method and will be shown in another video. When we see a dimmer switch on the wall, what is actually going on inside the switch itself? Gone are the days when a simple wire-wound variable resistor did the job. If you remember those, you may also recall that they started to become warm in use as the wire-wound resistor dropped the voltage to the lamp. It's all different now. Dimmer switches use semiconductor control circuits now. Most are incorporated into one small silicon chip with a couple of discrete components. We cannot see this without destroying the switch. All that we see is the customer control knob on the front of the switch and everything else is encapsulated inside the switch body. Inside the switch we have a charging circuit, a semiconductor trigger and an electronic switch, another semiconductor device that will allow current to flow through the lamp. We've deliberately kept the drawings simple so that they convey the general idea of operation. When the charging circuit is charged, the trigger is activated and this enables the electronic switch to operate, which begins to conduct current and causes the lamp to illuminate. Most dimmer switches will incorporate an on and off switch in the customer controls, that distinctive click as the switch is made when the knob is turned. With the switch closed in the on position, current will flow through a variable resistor that is attached to the back of the customer control knob. Depending on the setting, more or less current will flow. This current will flow towards a capacitor and begin to charge it up. And a capacitor is simply a storage device that will build up and store electrical charge. The rate of charge is set by the position of the variable resistor on the customer control knob. If a demand is made for brighter lights, the knob is rotated and effectively reduces the resistance of the variable resistor. With less resistance, the capacitor will charge more rapidly. This is the sequence of operation. Beginning at number one, the capacitor begins to charge up at a rate set by the customer control. At number two, the capacitor reaches a preset charge level and activates the trigger circuit. This is a type of semiconductor device called a DIAC. The DIAC allows current through and this is directed onto the trigger for the TRIAC device. At position 3, the TRIAC, a type of semiconductor switch, is triggered and allows current to flow through itself and the lamp with sufficient current to illuminate the lamp at number 4. With the switch in the OFF position, no current will flow and the lamp will be off. Close the switch by turning the control knob and the input waveform enters the circuit and charging is enabled, as just discussed. The charging circuit and the triac switch will reset themselves on every half cycle each time that the AC input waveform crosses the zero line. Let's look at some output waveforms now in order to understand better. Keep in mind that dimmers work by only allowing part of this AC waveform through to the lamp. What we see when we look at the light in the ceiling is a chopped up lamp output, and this is being chopped at 100 times every second. There's a lot going on inside that little box. This then is what we want the dimmer controls to do. First, when power is applied, the resistor capacitor combination will begin to charge up as at number 1. At number 2, when a set voltage or charge across the capacitor is reached, 
the Diak will fire and send a signal to the Triac. Then at number 3, the trigger voltage is put onto the trigger and the Triac begins to conduct. It allows current to flow through for all the rest of the half cycle, either positive or negative, and this allows the lamp to light up. When the input voltage crosses the zero line again, as an AC voltage will do, the Triac turns off and waits for the next trigger signal to arrive. The input voltage will remain constant at 230 or 240 volts. The Triac, however, is being triggered at some point during the cycle and then reset at the zero volts point, only to be triggered again mid-cycle and then to reset again and again. This triggering and resetting process occurs every half cycle, which means that with the standard UK mains frequency of 50 Hz or 50 cycles per second, the triggering and resetting occurs 100 times every second. The output waveforms then are going to be chopped versions of the smooth AC input voltage and it is this chopping that determines the overall brightness of the dimmed light. With the control knob turned on by only a small amount, we would expect the lamp to be just about glowing, just visible. You can see on this drawing how the output waveform is a chopped version of the input voltage. The triac is only being triggered towards the end of each half cycle, and this minimises the amount of current that passes through the lamp. If we remove the input cycle from the drawing, we can see more clearly the energy that is being let through the lamp on each half cycle. Not a lot of current at this minimum setting, but this is happening 100 times a second, once every 10 milliseconds. The lamp is flashing so fast that our eyes join up the bursts of energy. We don't see lots of flashes, they are seen instead as one continuous stream of dimmed light. What have we seen so far? The left drawing shows the two waveforms, the input waveform and the lamp waveform, overlaid on each other. With a little imagination, it's easy to separate them into separate drawings. The input is a constant 50 cycles per second AC waveform. The output, the waveform across the lamp, is chopped. On the minimum setting, only the last few degrees of each half cycle is allowing current through the lamp, and the result, a very dim light. Turn the knob to halfway, and we will have more brightness. The input waveform is unaffected, it stays the same. The output, though, has increased. The variable resistor in the customer control has less resistance. Less resistance means that more charging current gets to the capacitor and it therefore charges up more quickly. The result is that it fires sooner. In this case, halfway through each half cycle. 50% of each half cycle is available to energise the lamp. And now we can adjust the knob for maximum brightness, turned fully clockwise. Almost 100% of each half cycle is let through the lamp. The resistor and capacitor combination is now charging at its quickest rate and firing very early in each of the half cycles. It is unlikely to achieve 100% of the cycle due to the way the electronics and charging works, but certainly in the high 90%, which means that we see it as a fully bright lamp. Our eyes will not detect that very small loss. And that is a brief and very simplified look at dimmer switches for filament lamps. I find that knowing how they work is always interesting, even if there is nothing for us to see. And connecting the dimmer switch should be no different to any other lighting switch. Just remember that we should have only one dimmer switch in each lighting circuit, otherwise they will try and compete with each other. And all this and more will be in a future video on connecting the different types of dimmer switches into the circuit, one way, two way, LEDs and so on. And there we are, we hope you've enjoyed this video and 
that you've learned a little more about dimmer switches and how they work. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.